all should take one step forward tonight, inshallah. It is said, once a person sat on member and there was no space. So the caretaker of the masjid says, everyone should please take one step forward. So this alim said, tonight I don't need to speak. Because everything I wanted to say is this, every person should take one step forward to become a better person. So inshallah we should all take this a step forward and not remain stuck. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-Aliyya al-Azim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina abil qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في العرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعواه وأنصاره السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help and guidance and support so that I can do justice to this topic, inshallah. We explain the need for having practical guidance through examples, through role models. And then we talked about the great example that Allah has given us in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after that in the Ahlul Bayt السلام, and after that in our great ulama and then in Mu'mineen, men and women. When we reached Imam Hussein السلام, we said that Imam Hussein is a special example, is a special role model. And the reason is that Imam Hussein played a very historical role. He made sure that the efforts of all the prophets and messengers, which was summarized and presented by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. is preserved and can continue and then it would finally end with the aim of all the messengers with the aim for which Allah has created us and that is establishment of universal justice because Allah has two aims for our creation, two general aim. One is for every person, one is for mankind. The aim for every person is Allah has created each of us to become a servant of Allah, which means a servant of truth, a servant of virtues, a servant of all the beauties. This is for every person. But for humanity, what is the aim? The aim is to achieve the success of truth, the establishment of justice, establishment of kingdom of Allah on the earth. So we have two aims. One is for all humanity, one is for every individual. The aim for all humanity has not yet been achieved. Inshallah, when Imam Mahdi Sharif comes, that will happen. وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُ Allah has mentioned this in different scriptures that finally the earth would be inherited by the righteous people. 
never righteous people were in control of the earth. And therefore there was corruption, there was injustice. So, Imam Musa as we explained, has played a very important, crucial role in making sure that the efforts of the prophets are not lost and missed and wasted and it can carry on without being misguided till Imam Mahdi insha'Allah comes. Now we want to see how can we benefit from Imam Hussein as a salam as a role model and how can we share this role model with other people. This is very important discussion and we have only one uh, session so I don't know what can I do but inshallah maybe at least a little bit we can uh, start and open this discussion. First of all we need to know more about Imam Hussein Alayhi Salaam. When you have a role model what is the most important thing what is the most basic thing you should know your role model. It's not just enough to know the name of the role model. If you have a role model, you know, imagine, you know, look at what people do when they choose an actor as a role model. Or I don't know, a footballist as a role model, you see. They try to find out everything about him. Even what does he eat? Which restaurant? Which hairstyle? I don't know, which car he has? What was the, for example, a school that he was going to? Where, where do parents live? You see, they try to realize everything about these celebrities. This is a very much, you know, common. If we have a role model like Hussein alayhi salam, shouldn't we know everything possible about him? I'm not telling you to know Hussein as he was. This is not possible. But know Hussein as it's described to us, as it is portrayed in the books and resources that we have. Imam Hussein al lived for almost 57 years. Most of us only know the last few weeks of his life what he did from the time he left Medina, then he went to Mecca, and then on the way to Kufa, he was stopped in Karbala. So everything is just about these few weeks. Sometimes I mention this example. I say Allah has given us a reference which has 14 volumes. And in this reference, you have everything that you need. The 14th volume is not yet launched. But if you understand the previous 13 volumes, you can understand what the 14th is about. But how much do we know those 13 volumes? Some of the volumes we have not yet even opened. How much we know about Imam Hadi? This volume about Imam Hadi, we don't know. Some of them we have opened but have read just part of it. Only the last part about how they were killed. Or a little bit about their birth. Our knowledge of these 14 volumes is very limited. This is not fair. If you have a role model, you have to try to know everything which is mentioned, which is registered, which is reported about that person. I want to mention just a few examples that I think are very useful for us and also for everyone else to know about Imam Hussein. But there are lots of examples like this. For example, the kindness of Imam Hussein. This is something that we should know more about Imam Hussein because we normally know only about the battle. But Imam Hussein was a very kind person even inside the battle, during the battle. 
There are many stories about this. For example, there is a story that Imam Hussein alayhi salam once was near a garden that he had. And he went inside to check what is happening. And he saw a servant is having his food. And Imam watched him from a little distance. And saw that there is a dog. And he is sharing his bread with dog. Half for himself, half for the dog. Then Imam Ali Salam went to him and asked him, what are you doing? He said, this dog was hungry and I felt embarrassed to eat in front of a hungry animal. Imam Hussein alayhi salam said, for this reason, I free you. You have shown love to a dog, I free you. And then Imam alayhi salam, according to this historical uh, source, gave him 2,000 dinar. Now this is the capital you use to start a new life. Look at the love of Imam Hussain alayhi salam and how he encouraged people to show love even to an animal. Some people think that we are against animals because we say dog is not just, they think we are not against animals. It's just everything should be in its right place. Islam says don't bring dog inside the house because then there is a chance that it may replace family members. You see, some people prefer to have dog instead of having a child. Because having a child is full of responsibility and headache. But a dog is always loyal. It's easier to have a dog. So, Islam wants us to keep relations between ourselves, human beings. But if you have a dog for farm, for gardening, you have a kettle, you know, and the dog is, you know, protecting. That's not a problem. And in any case, we are not cruel to animals. We love animals. We love insects. We love everything. Because everything is a creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even our ulama say that if you have little water and you need to make wuzu, but there is a dog who is thirsty. And it's not enough for both. Give water to dog and make tayammu. This is Islam. So, Imam alayhi salam released, freed this person and gave him 2,000 dinar just by seeing this merciful action of this person. There is a story that once Imam alayhi salam saw Osama. Osama was a very young companion of the Prophet. You have heard the story of Rasulullah organizing an army and appointing Osama as the commander. And he said, man an Osama. The story, you know. So this Osama had become old and Imam Hussein saw him, he's very sad. Why are you very sad? He said, I have some debt and I am worried not about my death. No, I am worried that I may die and then it will be on my family to pay back. My family don't have this money, my wife, children. So I am very sad because a mu'min, when he borrows something, should be very concerned till he gives back. First of all, we shouldn't borrow easily. As much as possible, try not to borrow money. Even if it is without interest. I'm not talking about interest. Interest is another issue. It's another problem. But even Qarzul Hassan, 
We shouldn't borrow money as much as possible. We shouldn't borrow car things from people as much as possible. But of course, the people who are asked to lend, they should lend. That's another scenario. But we should be very hesitant to borrow. One reason is because then this is on your shoulder. It's on your zemma. What happens if you die? Imam Hussain alayhi salam, on the morning of Ashura, you have heard this story. He said, announce, make announcement among his army. It's very moving. The day of Ashura, enemies are there to kill them. And Imam has very little helpers. But Imam asked this announcement to be made. لا يقاتلن معي رجل عليه الدين. If there is anyone among you who owes money to people, who owes something to people, who has some debt, should not fight with me. فإنه ليس من رجل يموت وعليه دين لا يدع له وفاء إلا دخلنا. Because no one dies while there is debt on him and he has not left enough to pay back unless he goes to hell. It's very important. How can a Shia of Hussein be in debt and doesn't bother? As soon as you can, you should give back. So Imam so Osama is very sad. Imam said, I will be responsible. So Imam alayhi salam gave 60,000 dirham on behalf of Osama till Osama was still alive. And Osama was released from this debt and then afterwards he died. This is Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He is worried about death of another person. It is on my responsibility, on my shoulder. We know that how Imam Hussein alayhi salam, when he was stopped by Hor and his army, offered them water. Who can offer water to his enemy? A person who has great heart. He shares water that they had. They didn't have plenty of water, tanks of water. They had, you know, some water for themselves, but Imam alayhi salam shared with them. I was reading yesterday or the day before yesterday a very moving story. On the day of Ashura, people who knew Imam Hussein alayhi salam were very reluctant to fight one by one because they knew how brave is Imam and how strong is Imam so they were worried they were hiding themselves they were not coming front they were you know shooting arrows throwing you know spears but they were not ready for person to, to person fight one person from Sham he was not very much familiar with Imam Hussein he went to fight Imam. Imam alayhi salam struck him and he fell down. Imam alayhi salam realized that he is not ready for death. Imam said, do you want me to release you? He said, please. So Imam left him and his people came and took him. In the battle, who is ready to forgive his enemy who was to kill him? And says, let people take him. Even it is said that when Shemr, La'natullah alayh, sat on the chest of Imam. You know, there are 
differences in historical reports about who actually killed Imam Ali Salam. But according to this report, which is in Bihar al-Anwar, volume 45, page 56, it says, فَقَذِبَ شِمْرُ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ وَجَلَّسَ عَلَى صَدْرِ الْخُسَانِ He became very angry. And you know, we have to be very careful about anger. When we are angry, we are just a toy in the hand of shaitan. Never do anything when you are angry. Never say anything. Never make any decision when you are angry. Shemr became angry first. And then he sat on the chest of Imam Alayhi He took the beard of Imam and decided to kill Imam. What did Imam Hussein do? فَذَّحِكَ الْحُسَيْنَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ Imam smiled at him. فَقَالَ لَهُ أَتَقْتُلُنِي وَلَا تَعْلَمُوا أَنَا مَنْ Are you killing me and you don't know who I am? So Imam wants to bring a little love to him maybe he changes maybe he doesn't do this crime imam is going to be killed anyway but imam doesn't want this be on the shoulder of even shem such a great crime are you killing me and you don't know me perhaps you have forgotten who am i and and he smiled he didn't say this with anger. But Shem said, I know you very well. Ummuka Fatima to Zahra. Wa Abuka Aliyun al Murtava. Wa Jadduka Muhammadun al Mustafa. I know you very well. But even with Shem, Imam Hussein is trying. Maybe even Shemr can change. Of course, Shemr didn't change, but it was his fault. This is a great example. Even to person who is going to kill you, a smile. And offer a chance, an opportunity for Tawbah. If Imam Hussein was not accepting the Tawbah of Hur, Hor had different situation today. Imam accepted easily, even without complaining a word. Why you do this? Now, okay, I am forgiving you, but you do this. No, even without a, a word of complaint, Imam accepted and said, yes, you are a good person. So, these are some examples of the life of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and there are many many about his generosity about his humbleness there is a story that some poor people of Medina you know who were living on the sofa the platform outside the masjid they were very poor they asked Imam Hussein alayhi salam to join them for their food you know a person with very high you know prestige and position sometimes finds it difficult to eat with the poor people on the ground but imam Hussein alayhi salam said i join you but there is a condition that also you share come and be my guest and share with me my meal so imam had meal with them and also then invited them to his place so we have to read very carefully everything about the life of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and try to implement. It's not enough that we have very good leader. It's not enough that we have the best leaders. How much we are sharing with them those virtues, how much we resemble them. 
این فارسی وی سی گیرم پدر تو بود فاضل از فضل پدر تو را چه حاصل Imagine your father is allama, is great alim, is marja. But this not, is not making you alim. How much you have learned, how much you have studied. Our imams have virtues, but how much these virtues can be found in us? This is the question. So first, we should study their virtues. We should try to know everything about their life, their personality, but then to impediment. Now, there are two ways of following Imams alayhim salam, Ahlul Bayt as our role model. I hope, inshallah, uh, this point becomes clear tonight. Sometimes, we read something, a hadith, a story, and then we try to apply this to a similar situation in our life. For example, I say, this is the way Imam salam treated his family. And I try to apply this to my family. This is the way Imam treated poor people I try to apply to poor people. Okay, this is very good. But this is not enough. Why? Do you know why this is not enough? Because we may face in every age lots of circumstances, lots of scenarios in life that would not have necessarily exact precedence. For example, how should I live as a Muslim in a non-Muslim society? Maybe you don't find anything in the life of Imam Hussein directly about this. But if you know Imam Hussein's teachings, especially with the guidance of ulama, we can draw some rules, some guidelines that would help us even with new situations. Why Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif said, أما الحوادث الواقعة فارجعوا فيها إلى الرواة أحاديثنا. When new issues come up, arise, refer to the people who master our teachings. It's not job of every person to read a book of hadith or history and find out what should we do in new situations. You should refer to the people who have this expertise. They tell you that now what should you do when you go to university, when you go for work. A woman for example who goes for work, none of the members of Ahlul Bayt, their wives were going for work. Islamically is halal but if you want role model examples you cannot find this exactly there because they were not going to work. They were not going to university. So shall we stop people going to university, going you know, to work? No. But how can we benefit from their example? This is why we need to refer to our ulama. Our ulama explained to us that what are the etiquettes, what are the manners that we should observe. And these manners, can be general. You don't need to be told everything about every scenario separately. When you are told to be modest, then it doesn't make difference whether this modesty is go, for example, to the masjid or go to workplace or go to university. So, if we want to benefit from the example which Allah has given us in Ahlul Bayt, 
we should know as much as possible their lifestyle, their teachings, but with the help of ulama. Otherwise, people can be misguided. Look at some people today, how they think they are following the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. But everyone who knows a little bit of Islam would realize that this is not the sunnah of the Prophet. What we see today happening in the name of Islam with the banner of Islam, with the banner of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah by some people in Iraq and Syria. They say we follow the sunnah of the Prophet. Maybe some of them, maybe God knows, maybe some of them are sincere, but definitely they are misguided. It's not that everyone is agent, maybe some are sincere, but they don't understand. When there is no a scholarly approach to Islam, there is no proper methodology, and everyone becomes a mufti, and everyone becomes a person who gives opinion on Islam, and lives of people, honor of people, properties of people become toys in the hand of these people, then you see tragedies happen in the name of Islam. So, to understand the example of Ahlul Bayt al the example of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in particular, which is our topic, we need to refer to our scholars who teach us the best way of understanding and generalizing those teachings and lifestyles and manners to every scenario of life that we are facing today. If we live, for example, in North Pole, what are we supposed to do? If we live in a place that we have to fast in summer 18 hours, what should we do? We follow the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, but with the help of Ijtihad, with the help of Fiqh, which has its methods. Okay, now let me go back to our personal approach this issue by itself is very important, but we don't have time. I want to suggest something. I think there is a very practical and useful way of also using Ahlul Bayt as a role model. Instead of just studying and finding out beautiful practical tips and instructions we can do another thing and that is to develop a model of Imam Hussein inside your mind and heart if you know Imam Hussein very well then whenever you are faced with a situation that you should make a decision, think what would Imam Hussein do if he was in my position. This is possible. I am telling you, 80% if not more of your problems will be very easily clarified. Many things that we do, if we honestly think, if Imam Hussein was in my place, what would he have done? We realize the answer. Because we know that Imam Hussein alayhi salam would not do any little zul to anyone. Wouldn't do any little selfish thing. Most of our problems comes from selfishness. Comes from zulm carelessness just wanted to gain and not wanting to give we think that if we give we are losing if we give we are not losing so we should try to develop a model of imam alayhi salam who is in our heart 
Imam should be in our heart. It's the time of Salat. Listen to that Hussein who is in your heart. What would that Hussein tell you? He doesn't say you should say your Salat on time. You cannot say no. I don't know what does that Hussein say. It's very clear. Everyone who knows a little bit about Hussein would not have doubt that he should say Salat on time because Imam did this even in the middle of the battle. How should I treat my neighbors? How should I treat my family, my in-laws? Listen to that Hussein that is in your heart. Inshallah, there is no Yazid in our heart, I hope. I hope Hussein is alive in our heart. If Hussein is alive in our heart and we listen to him, I don't think we would have any problem. Because Hussein would clearly tell us what to do. And then, how we can help other people with this Hussein? If I have Hussein in my heart, and I act as he, as he tells me, then what would people see in me? Shall I repeat? If I have a live Hussein here in my heart, and I listen to him and act as he tells me, then what people would see in me? Wouldn't they see a follower of Hussein? Wouldn't see a person who is only doing good things? Then they would say, why this person is so special? Why this person is so selfless? Then they come to you. Can you tell me what is the secret of your success? Why you are so different? Why everyone loves you? Why everyone wants to be with you? Then you say, I am a Shia of Hussein. This is the best way of introducing Hussein. But if I tell people about the beautiful sayings of Imam Hussein, beautiful lifestyle of Hussein, but I contradict myself, Hussein, Na'uzubillah. If we say that for Hussein, family was very important, and then they see, Na'uzubillah, we have breakdowns of family. If we say for Hussein, poverty was not something that could be tolerated, then they see we have poor people in community and no one cares about them. If for Hussein education was very important, and they see that we don't you know, pay attention to education, and so on and so forth, then I don't think they would take our talks, our words seriously. So if he was able to change, he, would, he should have changed you. The best way of introducing Ahlul Bayt salam, is to change ourselves and let the light of Ahlul Bayt, the beauties of Ahlul Bayt come from us to the people. So you try to have Hussein in your heart, then you yourself should become Husseini. Do you think if we had even few Husseini people in each community, people would go anywhere else? Who is going to replace Hussein with Yazid? Don't say, you know, these people, for example, don't love, don't understand. No, most of these people have very good heart. Just they don't know. Most of the people around, even if they do some haram, it's not because they are bad. This is the way they are brought up. If they see someone like Hussein, they would be the first to help him. There is no prejudice, there is no biasness in many of the people that are around. Just, they were not fortunate to know such personalities that we have had. There is a 
sentence in one of the ziyarat of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. We say to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Qad ajabaka qalbi wa sam'i wa basari wa badani wa ra'ayi wa hawai. Imam Hussein has asked us to help. Hal min nasirin yansuruni. He has asked for help. Okay, how should we help him? By what we should help him? We say to Imam Hussein, to your call that you ask for help, my heart has responded. Qad ajabaka qalbi. My heart is at your service. Wasami, my ear is at your service. Wabasari, my eyes. Wabadani, my whole body. Warai, my mind, my opinion. Wahawai, my desire. If my heart, my eye, my ear, my mind, my whole personality is responding to Hussein, here I am, Labbaik Ya Hussein, then shouldn't I become myself a little Hussein? A little model of Hussein? Allah taslim lak. All my different organs of body and my heart and mind, my soul, everything is submissive to you. It's at your service. وَالْخَلَفِ الْبَاقِي مِنْ بَعْدِكِ And all the Imams after you. الْأَدِلَّاءِ عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ وُلْدِكِ Those who guide towards Allah from your progeny. فَنُصْرَتِي لَكُمْ مُعَدَّةِ My help is prepared for you. My assistance is ready for you. حَتَّى يَحْكُمَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الْحَاكِمِ Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make his decree when he decides that we should get involved for establishment of the universal justice. So now we understand that answering to the call of Imam Hussein, following the example of Hussein is not something which can be done only by mourning for Imam Hussain only by crying for Hussain this is part of it which is very important but this is not all of it we get together we shed tears why our Imam salam was not helped by Muslims of that time why Imam Ali Salam was alone? Why Imam was not able to achieve his goals? I hope we don't do something today to our Imam so that people later also cry for Imam and say, why these people didn't do their historical role. So if we want to show to the people of the world the great example of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. First of all, we should ourselves know Imam alayhi salam as much as possible. And then try to follow the example of Hussein so much so that a Hussein would be inhabiting my heart, my mind. I receive call from that Hussein. This is right, this is wrong. This is what you are supposed to do, this is what you are not supposed to do. And when I listen to that live, alive Hussein, that living Hussein, then I myself become Hussein. My Salat, my Hajj, my fasting, my family life, my business life, my study life, my community life, my interaction with the larger society, everything becomes Hussein. And then you would see how people would be attracted. 
how would people love to know about this Hussein? And this is something that, inshallah, we have to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to really be grateful to the gift that Allah has given us in Ahlul Bayt We have to be really grateful to this great teaching and this example and lifestyle of Ahlul Bayt. If we thank Allah till we die, we cannot thank Allah enough. Alhamdulillah alladhi hadana lihaza wa ma kunna linahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. But then this brings responsibility. We have to show our gratitude by following them and sharing with other people. The disciples of Isa alayhi salam al hawariyun they said to Isa, please ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send us a banquet. To ask Allah to send a banquet from heaven to the earth is something great. Then Isa alayhi salam mentioned their request to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prayed. What did Allah say? Allah said, Inni munziluha alaykum. I'm going to send down that ma'idah. But, fa'amma man yakfur ba'du. After I send you this heavenly banquet, whoever is ungrateful, fa'inni u'adhibuhu azaban la u'adhibu ahadah. After that, I am going to punish you in the way that I'm not punishing anyone. When Allah gives you the gift of Quran, the gift of Ahlul Bayt, this is not less than that Ma'ida, which was a tray of food. If we are not grateful, then how can we be escaping from punishment? Inni munziluha alaykum faman yakfur ba'duh fa inni u'adhibuhu azaban la u'adhibu ahad. May inshallah this not be our story. May our story is a story of the people who are grateful and they do justice to this great gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah. Tonight is the night of Ashura. We remember all the martyrs. You remember Hazrat Abbas in a special way. If we think about the situation of Ahlul Bayt tonight, we find a mixed kind of feelings. On the one hand, they are happy because they are together. They see each other. Lady Zainab and other ladies and children especially this is the last chance for them those who are going to be killed maybe they have less pain but those who are going to remain that's much more difficult but even when they are seeing Imam salam and other members of Ahlul Bayt there is pain I don't know if you have felt this. If, for example, you know, your child you know, comes after a long time to see you, and he's there for a few days. Even before your child goes, you miss him. Because you know that in a matter of few hours or few days, again, he's not going to be here. Or if you have someone who is going to die, a relative that doctor said in few days he's going to die. So you see him, but still you are mourning for him. So the mourning didn't start after they were killed. The mourning started from the time they knew that they are going to be. It's a very difficult situation in that night. This poem explains this night and compares it with the situation tomorrow.